There's no better time than now to get back in the game, to get back in the game. Some of you have been on your 30th round of inconsistency or letdown. Uh, you've been dealing with overwhelming pressure. But here's the principles. Life is principle based. And these principles right here will help you get back in the game so that you can continue on towards the success you were created for. What's going on, my folks? Welcome back to another week here on the Mentality of Success. And today I'm going to show you a quick four step process that I use. Four step process to get back in the game. Now, what do I mean by get back in the game? Some people call this like, uh, you ever heard someone say, I fell off? You asked them, well, how's, how's that thing going? And they said, well, man, it was going strong and then I kind of fell off. Well, that happens to all of us. For a lot of us, we start things strong, but we tend around that 35 day, I would say, mark. If you're really strong, 14. If you're like really dealing with inconsistency, or even sometimes you can get past the 90 day mark and still fall back into old habits. But we've all been there. We've all had this experience to where we start a new habit, we, st we start going towards that dream or that goal, and it just seems like inevitably. Inevitably, life just seems to get heavier and heavier until we break, until it breaks our, our new habit, breaks our new cycle. Um, and if that's you, this is going to help you. This is a four-step process that I use. And here's the good news. The solution is principle-based. In fact, life, here's some really good news. Life is predominantly principle-based, meaning it's not rocket science. It's not, it's not something you have to kind of roam around without any clarity. You know, you're just walking around trying to figure out what to do. No, the good news is life is principle based. And when we understand that life is principle based, we know, for instance, like a, like a farmer, a farmer knows if I plant this seed into good fertile ground, it will grow and bear fruit. And life is the same way. When you apply the right principles, your life We'll see the right results. The question is, what are the right principles? And today I'm going to answer that for you when it comes to getting back in the game. Now, I brought out my board. I haven't used this in a while, but I think this visual is important. If you're listening, just continue listening. I'm going to show a visual here. We're on YouTube, and you can go there if you want to actually see this. Because I believe the way we learn, sometimes when we see it, it adds to the acceleration of us obtaining the information which will increase the odds that we actually go out and act on it. All right. So there's a four step process I use. And uh, let's call this, you know, how to how to get back in the game, how to get back. Oh, my gosh, my handwriting one day will get better. How to get back in. All right. And here's why this is, example is important. Whenever you get to that point, we're coming up on a new year. Whenever you get to that point, and whether you're listening to this and we're well in the year, it still applies. And it applies best when you find yourself kind of in that no man's land. Tell me, have you ever felt like this? Have you ever felt like, like you, the pressure of life, like that pressure of, I have all these responsibilities. I have my personal responsibilities that predominantly, you know, have to do with my physical health or my, my mental health. I have my family responsibilities, whether you are, you know, son, daughter or husband, wife, brother, sister, those, those familial responsibilities. Then you have your community responsibilities. If you serve or you have friends within the community and then that's not even including like the, the work and financial responsibilities. That's a lot of potential pressure. It's a lot of pressure and it's for good reason that oftentimes you've probably seen people like this. You've probably experienced it. I know I have where you will get to a point where you're just overwhelmed and frustrated with all the responsibilities and pressure that you are carrying. I just want to make sure I paint a good enough context for what this applies to. And that can be in the most simplest things. And I hope you'll, you'll I'll show you that as we go through it. So here's the first the first step, 
to getting back in the game. Because you're going to get back in the game if you if you found yourself on the sideline. The first step is to, all these start with R's. The first one is retreat. Retreat. And I mean it in both senses of the word. I mean retreat in the sense of run away, you know, run away from the enemy, right? You ever seen it in those, those movies where they're battling and they're fighting, right? And one, one party starts to lose and they just start yelling out, retreat, retreat. <laughs> like, that's what I want you to do when you begin to feel those overwhelming and kind of high pressured situations where you know you're not operating at your best. Okay. And I also mean retreat in the sense of getting away to a place where peace abides, where peace lives. I'll give you an example. For me, when, I, when I'm kind of hitting on, on all cylinders, when I'm in a, a very healthy place, that, that area, that retreat for me is in my morning time. And some of you, if you've been following long enough, you know I talk about this all the time, both the, the goods and the bads of, of being consistent in this area. But that's my retreat because that's the place where I can get there and just there's silence. There's no one calling me. There's no one asking me for anything, which adds to the pressure, right? Which adds to the responsibility. What's that retreat for you? You might say, well, Josh, I don't have money to go to on an actual retreat. And that's fine. You, you don't have to have money. You can make a retreat right where you are. You can go take a walk. You can go to a secluded place where it's just you and nature. And turn the phone on airplane mode if you, if you can't fathom leaving it behind. This is so important. And the only way we can allow ourselves to regroup, and I go back to that example because I'm thinking about medieval wars right now for some reason in my head. It's the only way that we can get away from the enemy, which in this case the enemy is those overpressurized, overwhelming feelings, all the responsibilities and the expectations that you probably aren't meeting right now. Get away from it all. It's the first step, retreat, all right? Second step, and this is, again, we're talking about how to get back in the game, how to get back in when you feel like you are hitting that wall or you've kind of gotten out of... Uh, whatever routine you've been or goal you've been going towards and you've kind of fell off a little bit. Here's how you get back in. You retreat first off. Get away from the things that are causing you to feel overwhelmed, to be distracted, to avoid purposely, which I do a lot of that avoiding purposely. That, that looks like for me being on your phone and just mind numbing. In fact, before I move on to the second one, let me say this. I was reading a book earlier this week and it talked about a, uh, a quote from, I think it was Sigmund Freud, which is a, a famous psychologist. And it said that for men, meaning men and women, what we do is we distract ourselves. When our, the more our life seems to lack meaning, the more we distract ourselves. The more we feel like we're not making progress or we're not doing anything meaningful, the more we will distract ourselves with pleasure. And so I say all that to say sometimes you may need to retreat away from the things that you find pleasurable, like eating. And that may sound funny, but I can tell there, there have been times in my life where I was trying to, literally trying to eat the pressure and the overwhelming feelings away. And I don't mean like some dark, you know, depressive state that it doesn't have to be that it can get there but i'm talking about just you're just stuffing your face because it, it helps you not have to think about things and it can seem very harmless but it's a form of avoidance because we know it's far more distasteful or dissatisfying i should say distasteful is not what i meant to say it's far more dissatisfying to remove the pleasure and focus on the hard stuff so that's what I mean by retreat. All right. The second one here is after you retreat, you then need to reset. You need to reset. Now, what does that look like? Resetting could be you've retreated. You've gotten to a place of silence. Now it's time to assess. 
And I can give you an example. There have been times as a married man, and those of you who are married, you will raise your hand. Amen. Sometimes, as, as married folk, we get into some very heated discussions with our spouses. I mean, almost borderline, it's over kind of discussion. And some of you may have never had those. If, you, if you've never been there, God bless you. We can all learn from your marriage. But the rest of us, we've had some nights where we've thought about it. Like, hmm, how much is this insurance policy again? <laughs> I'm joking on that part. Do not, do not contemplate murder, all right? But we've thought about, like, should I stay in this relationship? And it's usually because we've had some outlandish argument, probably about something stupid, and we've gotten into a, an, effective, an ineffective communication uh, interaction, and we've probably damaged each other. Each other. We've probably damaged each other, and so now emotions are running high. And I heard, uh, I think it was Myron Golden that I first heard say this, when emotions run high, intelligence runs low. And so the reset is very important because the reset allows us to do the most important thing, which is to reset our emotions. I do a lot of corporate training, and one of the things that I teach leaders in business is when your emotions are high, I want you to think about that like this. If I were to go out and just drink profusely hard liquor for a few hours, would you, would you jump in my car and let me drive you home? Or let me replace that word. Would you jump in my car and let me lead you home? Would you trust me to lead myself home? No, why? Because I'm intoxicated. In this case, I'm intoxicated with alcohol. But in, in, in life, emotions can intoxicate us. There's a video I did a few weeks back talking about the amygdala and how that little bitty piece in our, in our brain, which is important, but that little almond-sized piece, there's so many people today who, uh, who, in my opinion, allow themselves to be led by only 0.3% of their brain. Or 0.7, whatever it is. Which means we can live our lives intoxicated by our emotions. And just like when you are under the influence of alcohol and you're not in the best state to make decisions, when you are intoxicated by your emotions, that is not the best time to make decisions. Some of you, you've done things that you regret, things that you're ashamed of, things that you wish you could take, uh, take back, which I, I guess is the same as regret, things that you're probably still paying for today because you did them while intoxicated by your emotions. Now, the good news, life is not over, but if you want to grow from that in the future, you got to learn this reset step. This reset step is what helps us to reset our emotions, get from that intoxicated anger. I've been in times where, where I've, I've wanted to say the worst things after I've been hurt. And I'm talking about like marital arguments here. But then I get back into my, I get back, I retreat, I get back into my, my space and I begin to just talk through it. And, so, and I, that emotion gets filtered out. And I realize, man, that's, that's I don't want to say that. No, that's not what I want to say. I have literally said things out of my mouth and said, wait, whoa, whoa, I don't want to say that. <laughs> that, that. Do not say that to that Puerto Rican woman. The reset is important because it allows us, I'm going to circle this one, because if, if we in our world can just practice this one, man, we can solve so much. Because we live in a world right now where everybody's just operating off of emotion. There is no retreat. There is no reset because that's a surprise thing, right? I can't back down. Everyone's just go forth, go forth. And it's a lot of intoxic emotionally intoxicated people trying to have conversations where the, the objective is to drive solution, but you can't drive solution because you're intoxicated by your emotions. The objective is to execute on that goal or that plan or that dream that you have, but you can't because you're intoxicated by your emotions. The plan is to get back into the game, to get back into the fight. Though you've been on the 30th cycle of failure, but to get back into it, but you can't because you're intoxicated by your emotions. And your emotions are telling you a story that's not true. That's why the reset is so important. So you want to retreat and then you want to reset. I have that argument. I say a few words to my wife and then I go, I, then, I, then I get up the next day and say, Josh, let's reset. 
Now you have to apologize. And we know, I mean, especially like me, my stubborn uh, um, personality, you have to learn to apologize. But it's so important because it resets things. And when you've reset things, now you can do the third step. And this is good, y'all. This is how you're going to get back into the game this, this week. Or I ain't waiting for the upcoming year. This week, this is how you can get back into the game. You retreat, you reset, and then you reflect. And this is important because reflection is where we can analyze our behavior, our actions, and the results that were uh, that came from those actions. Right? It's important to retreat, you know, reset, get rid of all the, the toxic emotions that can cause you to not think straight, not lead your life straight. And then once you've got once you've sobered up, now you can reflect. Now you can take the personalization out. Well, I can't believe he said this to me. I can't believe she said that to me. Now you can take that out and say, okay, what did this person say? Look at it from their perspective. What did they need? And that's hard, especially when you don't agree with that person. There's been times where I, I, I've struggled in that friction because I disagree with the person, but I also need to consider what do they need because that is what will get us towards a solution. And so the reflection is, is very critical because then we can reflect on how did we get here? What happened once we arrived? What were the consequences there? And then what do we need to do to resolve this? What do we need to do to resolve this? Because there's two options. Either you resolve it or you terminate the relationship. And I'm not just talking about like relationships. I mean, there, we, have relate, we are in relationship with our goals. We are in relationship with principles. Discipline, that's a relationship. Wisdom, that's a relationship. Knowledge, that's a relationship. So if I reflect and I say I took the wrong knowledge here, what do I need to do to get back into the right relationship? Let me go get the right knowledge. Let me humble myself. Let me reflect. Let me not take it personal. Let me not blame someone else. Let me take ownership. Reflect on how I got here and do better moving forward. Reflection. That's how you get back in. You retreat, you reset, then you reflect. And then the, once you've reflected and you come up with uh, a, a strategy of how to, how to uh, not a strategy, once you come up with identifying the mistakes that were made or where you fell off and you measure that and you keep track of that, like I'm my life right now is so systematized mentally that I know, like I can be in the middle of a, of a fall off, but I know what caused it. And you may say, well, Joshua, what, what does that matter? Well, when you know what causes it, you can measure it. I know, okay, I made that decision. It led to this result. And it's the fifth time I've done this. It's the sixth time I've done this. It's the 10th time I've done this. And what happens is as we measure it, we hold ourselves accountable. We increase our level of ownership. And I'm not going to get on this soapbox, but I will say, just think about in our society. Think about, go, roll, scroll through your, your social media feed. And think about the amount of people who are bringing up real issues, real issues that are challenging. But how many of them are only speaking to their ownership of how to fix it? Leaders own. The wealthy own. The successful own. We talk about owning assets and, and wealth and in, and in finance. The best asset you can own is your, is your habits, your actions. The best assets you and I can own. Because if we can own those before anyone else does, we, we shave off the, the temptation of getting offended, of getting defensive, of getting prideful because someone else called out what we should have called out first. Come on. You know this is good. I don't care. I don't care what nobody say. This this is what helps. This is what helps me. This is why I've been able. This is why I was able to write that book in five months because I I, I took I took ownership. Joshua, you were being lazy. You're sleeping in during the time you could be working. But if someone else would have came up and said that to me, I would have been highly <laughs> highly offended because no one likes to be called lazy. But if it's true, tell yourself the truth first. 
That way no one else will have to. And I don't mean beat yourself up. I don't mean self-sabotage or, or, or what is it? What's that word? I think it's self-degrade. Don't, don't self-deprecating, uh, I think is what it's called, which sounds, it's a weird word. I hate saying it. It's closer to another word that's terrible. But I'm not saying kill yourself over it, but own it. This is where I stand. This is not okay. What can I do to move forward? That's reflection. All right. Last one. Once you've once you've retreated, once you've reset, gotten those emotions sober, taking take some time to reflect, focusing on the facts and the behaviors. Then, then and only then, I recommend you plan to re-enter. And I spelled that wrong. Let's try that again. <laughs> re-enter. This is where you, this is the beauty of life right here, man. This is the principle that I, that I love the most, which is if, if you woke up today on a new day, there's opportunity to re-enter. There's opportunity to get back on the horse, to get back in the game. But if you don't do these other three things first, you will just be exhausting your, your morale. You will be exhausting your perseverance, your resilience. Because you don't have an effective plan. You don't have an effective formula for how to, how to bounce back and get back in the game. How to get back to it. I think I've fallen off of workout plans more times than I can count. But guess what? We're getting on the next one. We're getting back into it. I'm not just going to give up on my health. I'm not just going to give up on, on my physical uh, well-being. Even though the tendency is to want to beat yourself up and accept this lie that you'll never get it right. That is a lie. If you're believing any, if you're believing this lie over anything in your life, that you'll never be good enough, you'll never be a, a good parent, you'll never be a good business owner or professional, or or you never have great friends or great relationships. If you're believing any lie that starts with "I will never," I want to give you the permission to destroy that today and take ownership of your ability to re-enter, to retreat, to reset, get those toxic emotions out, reflect on on where are you at now, what went wrong, and what do you need to do to move forward, and then get back in the game, baby. Get back in the game, baby. I don't care how many times you failed. I do not care how many times you failed until this point. People look at my life and they see some of the successes and they think, great, you've written, you've written a book, author, that's great. You, you, you own a business, you, you've done this financially, that's great. But you don't know how many times we failed moving up until that point. You know how many arguments that took place? How much work had to be done? How much I had to grow? Which growth is the greatest example of this formula. This is what growth looks like. It's the constant measurement. Because there's value in you that we need. There's purpose in your life that we need. It's non-negotiable. We need it. You make us better. You make the, the earth better because there's value within you that needs to be unleashed and developed so that you can get a return on your life and we can get a return on it. I hope this helps. Again, here are the four. Next time you feel like you've fallen off, as we all have, this is what you're going to do. You're going to retreat, get away so that you can reset Get your emotions back in alignment, whatever that means for you. For me, that's getting into a, a space of worship and gratitude and, thank, and, and, and praying to God and focusing on things that I'm grateful and thankful for. And getting into God's word, where I believe it's truth and promises. That's my reset. I'm just taking you through my personal one here. And then reflecting, using that principle and the truth and, and, and filtering my life through it. To see what where, where, where did I go wrong? Where, where did I get off the, the, the beat here? Because that's the standard. And then re-entering. Grace. Re-entering. Give yourself that grace. Give yourself that, that position of ownership in your life. And authority. Which is one of the nine activators of any dream you want to accomplish. And if you do this, you will get back in the game and you will have some great days and some great weeks ahead of you. All right?
That's all for this week. I hope you found this to be helpful. If so, make sure you do not forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you hear that ding that you just heard, right? Hit that notification button so you don't miss any of these. And once again, I love you all. This has been the Mentality of Success. And I will see you right back here, same time, same place next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. Till the next time.